Well, hello everyone, this is The Balkan Guy, and welcome to my channel where I talk about all things Eurovision. If you love Eurovision and if you love hearing people talk about Eurovision watching this type of videos, then make sure to subscribe to my channel, make sure to follow me on my Instagram because that is all that this channel is about. Now, what am I going to be talking about in this video? Well, you already know because you read the title, but I'm going to be talking about the potential realistic Eurovision 2022 winners. Now, this is an exciting topic. Who is going to bring it home? Who is going to win this year? I have done a lot and a lot of analysis. I have looked at the odds. Obviously, odds are a big thing. I've looked at the odds for this year's Eurovision. I have looked at the My Eurovision Scoreboard app, where people, mostly like Eurovision fans, rate who they think is going to win. I've also looked at polls that have been on many different websites on who people think is going to win. And I have also talked to other people about this. And obviously, I have my own opinions as well. And I have also looked at the views on the music videos that have been posted on the Eurovision and on the singers' channels in order to bring it to this list of countries that I think actually stand a chance to win this year in Eurovision. Also, one other thing to obviously mention is why do I have credibility to talk about this? Well, <laughs> good question. Some tabloids have said that I am the hottest Eurovision analyst. Now, I don't know if that is true. I don't know how many Eurovision analysts are out there. All I know is that some tabloids, <laughs> and yes, I'm talking multiple, <laughs> have said that about me. So like, I think that brings some credibility. No, no, do y'all think? <laughs> Obviously I'm messing around. I mean, yes, it is true. Uh, do I agree with it? No, <laughs> not at all. Obviously my opinion doesn't have I would say any legitimate credibility. I'm a big Eurovision fan. I've been a Euro big Eurovision fan for the longest of times and I have done my research. I did think about this a lot. It actually, the reason why this video is coming out so late and not exactly when the 40 songs were out is because I actually wanted to bring a good list with good reasoning behind it that I'm going to explain to you guys. Now, before I get into my list, if you came to this video in order to hear about the following three countries and their chances of winning, <laughs> which I know is a big topic, and those countries are uh, Poland, Greece, and the UK, then you're going to be disappointed. They're not on my list, I can already tell you, and I'm already going to tell you why they're not on the list, because I can already see the comments coming, hating on me, and telling me how bad my opinion is, because these three countries are not on the list. The simple reason why they're not on this list is because they're not winning. <laughs> Do I think that Greece and Poland are going to be in top 10? I'm pretty sure they will, especially Greece. Greece is definitely going to be in top 10. Do I, is it going to win? It's not going to win. They're competing against songs. For example, Greece is directly competing against Sweden because they're very similar songs. Sweden has higher chances. I don't, I'm like 99% sure Greece is not getting a better place than Sweden. Poland is directly competing against Italy because they're very similar songs. Who is going to do better? Italy is going to do better. It's, so yeah, do I think these two songs will be in top 10? Yes. Do I think they have a chance to win? No, that is not why they're not on, list. on this list. I'm talking about only songs that have a chance at winning, not getting top 10. So I'm sorry if you're from those countries, those are your favorites. That's just the conclusion that I came to from my research. I, <laughs> if you want to go ahead and hate on me in the comments, you can go ahead and do that already. You don't have to watch the rest of the video. <laughs> And I know it's coming. It has come every single video I've posted. But yeah, I don't think those countries are winning. <laughs> now, let's go ahead and get into my list because I'm super excited about this one. The way I split it up is I'm going to be talking about five songs that I think would be shock winners and five songs that I think legit are probably going to win. And if I was betting my money, I would bet on one of these five songs. Uh, and I'm going to be like going through in order of what I think is most likely to win. So among the shock winners, first country on my list is Austria. Austria is one of the fan, big, big, big fan favorites. I mean, if you look at the My Eurovision scoreboard, they're in the fifth place. Better than like most songs that you would, that are like 
that apparently have higher chances to win, and they're re doing really bad in odds. So if you compare it, like, fans are loving this song, but odds are not loving it, now why is that happening? And the views are loving it, it has a lot of views, and Lumix is a really experienced DJ. Pia Maria, is she an experienced singer? We don't know yet, there's a lot of big mystery there. Do I think it stands a chance to win? Yes. The only way for this to win is if it has impeccable staging, like this staging needs to be out of this world, and it can win, because fans are loving the song, and I can see already like people watching Eurovision also loving the song and voting for it, but in order for that ha to happen, vocals need to be perfection, and staging needs to be impeccable. Like, it literally needs to be something crazy. So yeah, does it have a chance to win? Yes, is a really, really small, also yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it does have a chance, and I am ho holding a hope because this is my personal favorite. Now, the next country, and on my place, the ninth, is Serbia. Uh, Serbia, I think, is probably the biggest dark horse this year in Eurovision. They really do have a chance to win. I don't know if y'all have seen, but like this song has been exploding in many countries. And yes, it's been exploding in Serbia, Bosnia, Croatia, Montenegro, but it's also been exploding in Austria, Germany, Norway, uh, Sweden and like a bunch of random countries obviously like I was thinking okay Maybe the diaspora has been watching the videos, but it's been in country trending in countries that don't have that much Serbian diaspora So I'm like who is watching this song and why is it on trending in that countries? That makes me think that this song because of its art quality and because of its meme quality it can win <laughs> Like, this song could possibly surprise all of us and somehow win. Do I think it's likely to happen? No. Do I think it's likely to happen to do well? Yes. Uh, do I think it's likely for it to flop and not uh, for it to like flop really bad? Yeah, I also think the chances of that are pretty high as well. But it does have a chance to win because it's just so different and it's so out there, but it needs to have like staging that's gonna appropriately send a message to the rest of the countries and it's just gonna be like super super meme worthy because this song is super meme worthy but yeah i do think that serbia does have slight chances of pulling it out and bringing it home this year next up is the netherlands the reason why i think netherlands would be a shock winner uh, and I know this is one of the fan favorites, I know this is fourth on the My Eurovision scoreboard, so obviously like good chances people are loving this song. But just like Greece, it is competing directly against Sweden, because it is a female ballad. Sweden has higher chances, realistically, Sweden does have higher chances. Do I think Netherlands can pull it off? Yes, possibly, if they have, just like Austria, literally like the most magical staging, and obviously Austria needs to have something shopping, shocking, something big. Netherlands needs something really magical and really special, uh, because that's what that's the vibe that the song is sending. So yeah, there is a small chance that the Netherlands pulls it off, uh, but do I think it's very likely? No. <laughs> I think it's gonna probably get top 10 because people are loving this song. I can see this being maybe like a Blanche moment in Eurovision, because the songs are very similar uh, and there is that still small hope that if the staging I don't think it can win just on a song on its own I think it really needs staging that are that is gonna elevate it and just like bring something wild so yeah that is why Netherlands is on my list of shock winners next up is Australia people are so well by people I mean Eurovision fans they're oh my god they're robbing the song so so much I mean on the Eurovision scoreboard app, it's so low, I think it's on like 15th or something, but Australia has really high chances to win. First of all, think about who Sheldon is. Sheldon is a big world star, a lot of people are going to recognize his face, and a lot of people are going to be happy to recognize his face because people have been wanting him in Eurovision for the longest of times, ever since he started with the talent competitions. Now, next up, this song is beautiful, his voice, he's, we know that he will perform this perfectly live. All of these other countries, I feel like we ha there is that risk. Well, not all, most. There is a risk if it's gonna sound li good live or not. You know that he's gonna sound perfect live. That is like one guarantee you have with him. Now, besides that, he has very extravagant outfits and uh, obviously the uh, face mask. I'm not sure if I should call it a mask or whatever <laughs> it is. It's gonna make him stand out. And it's like, yes, there are so many male ballads this year and there are so many ballads, balance but just because of his styling and the package that he's bringing he will stand out and it's such an emotional song that people are going to relate to people 
if you think this doesn't have a chance to win, then you're thinking something wrong because this, it's gonna surprise everyone. It's really gonna surprise everyone. Just think about the Eurovision audience. I can see so many countries giving points to this. Uh, and usually Australia does well in Eurovision. Uh, even like when they don't read the best of songs. Obviously last year was an exception, it was their first time to not qualify, but obviously we know why that happened, because the song just wasn't it. This year it's... Uh, I see Australia winning. I would not be shocked at all. Obviously it's on my shock winners because it would shock others, but I personally would not be shocked at all if Australia took it home. And if they do something really special with the staging, y'all, this can win. This can really win. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, and if it does, remember my words, I said it here first. <laughs> and the last on my list of shock winners is France. As I've said in some of my previous videos before, I think this is the best French entry in Eurovision yet. <laughs> uh, a lot of people would disagree and would say probably voila, voila, voila. <laughs> is better. <laughs> I don't think it is. <laughs> I do not like that song one bit. Uh, but this song, oh my god, it pulls all the right strings, it is so ethnic, it is so different, people are not expecting this from France at all, and it's gonna shock everyone, and I feel like people might appreciate it because of that more, because it's shocking them and it's giving them something that they're not expecting. It's ethnic, it's very cultural, I mean it's Eurovision. People have been complaining about songs not being ethnic enough and not being cultural enough. This is it. This is bringing all the ethnicity and all the culture into their song while also sounding very contemporary and also very modern. Obviously, the only things that I can think of is they need to sound better vocally than they did on the national final and they need to get their stage together. I love the vibe that they were going get with the mystic, uh, kind of like, I don't know what to put it, but it, it was like dark, but it had like, bright lights that were like uh, line based and who has done that in Eurovision already? Norway 2019 with Kano. They did similar type of staging and guess what? They won the televote. So people already, we know that they love that type of staging and they love that type of ethnic uh, songs because I, I really compare it to that song because it just reminds me so much of it. Not in a way that it sounds similar, just like the aspects of it are very similar. So we know that is a successful concept that has done well already. They won the televote. And so this year it makes me only think that France can actually pull it off. Would it be a shock? Yes, it would, because it's not one of the favorites. But the song is quality, and it's just bringing something so different and something so unexpected. So yes, out of all these shock winners, I would be least shocked if France won it all, because it's there's so much here, guys. I just, I'm, I'm absolutely in love with it, and I'm sure the people watching your vision are also going to be in love with it. Now we are going to go ahead and move on onto the five, five. <laughs> country slash songs that I think have the most realistic chance of winning. And as I said before, if I was betting my personal money on one of these songs to win, I would bet on one of these five because I think they realistically have the highest of chance because they're, it's, they just have like the best package overall that would kind of like uh, fit everyone watching Eurovision rather than just me or the ESC fans. I'm just thinking like general audience. I feel like these five songs are the most likely to win. So let's go ahead and get into the list. On my fifth spot, I have Norway. Now a lot of you I know are gonna be shocked about that one, but the reason I have Norway on as one of the real realistic winners is Norway is not competing against anyone. We have so many ballads and we have so many kind of like, well, I have we have a few different bops. Norway is just completely different than any other song. It is a bop, but it's a mean bop. So, and it's such a good song. Obviously it has the fun factor. Uh, the lyrics are funny and they're wolves, which is gonna make people really remember them. And like, when you watch this performance, you cannot forget it. And we know Europeans in Eurovision love joke entries. Joke entries have always done well. Uh, well, if they're actual good jokes, and I think this is the best joke entry this year. It is so well produced. It sounds like songs that have exploded worldwide and I can see this exploding after the semi-final. And just, they're amazing. They're bringing so, so much. The stage, if they bring the staging that they did in the national final, they can already be top 10. If they do something even better at Eurovision, this can win. This can win easily. I think this can win Televote like 
easily, easily, easily. I think people are gonna love, love, love this. But the reason why I think it can also like do well with the jury is because it's a really well produced song. There's so much professionalism behind this entry and the storyline, and there's so much quality here. So I, I think this song really, really has a realistic chance to win. It's doing really well in odds. It's doing decently well on the scoreboard app. It's doing well with fans. Have you looked at the views? This song has a lot of views. And that's like really surprising. Like I remember it came out on the Eurovision channel at the same time, same day as Poland. And Poland is one of the powerhouses and like people have been hyping Poland up and watching the video so much. This song has more views. And it's not only the Norwegians watching this, it's people all over the Europe. Most of my friends who are like not big Eurovision fans, whoever I showed this song to, they loved it. Just because it has that vibe and it has that impact on people that would just attract them, even if they're big Eurovision fans, if they're not. I know a lot of Eurovision fans are rating this slow because LC or whoever their favorite was in Melody Grand Prix didn't win. People who are gonna watch Eurovision will not know that. They will not know what happened in the national final. They will see this and they're gonna love this. So yeah, this is one of the realistic winners. And don't be surprised if this does really well and this one is Stellabot because it just, it screams Stellabot winner to me. Next up, I have Ukraine. Do I think this is the best song this year? No. <laughs> do I like it? Do I think it's bringing a lot to the table? Yes. Would I think, do I think this song has a chance to win because of the song itself? No. Do I, the reason why I think it has a win, and we all know that, is because of what's happening in Ukraine right now. It's gonna get a lot of sympathy votes and it might win because of that. <sighs> but it's... I'm not saying the song is bad, don't get me wrong. I love the song. I've been listening to the song a lot. Uh, and I think it's bringing something cultural and I think it's bringing like a banger that a lot of people are gonna like. But I just don't think it would be winning because of the song itself. It would obviously be winning. If it does win, we all know why, well, why, why it won. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I do think it's a realistic winner, uh, that is why it's on my list, uh, but compared to, I, there are a lot of people have been telling me that they hate the fact that we already know the winner of this year and that it's gonna be Ukraine 100%, I don't think so, I don't think it's Ukraine 100%, I know that it's gonna get a lot of sympathy votes and I know people are gonna be supporting it because of what's happening in Ukraine, but I don't, don't think that guarantees it's a win. I really, really don't think so. Because there have been other songs where you could have said that like, oh, this is gonna do well because of a certain thing and because of the sympathy votes. I'm not gonna name what country it was, but it never really happened. And I will name one example, Bosnia 1993. Uh, I mean, <laughs> we, as y'all know, I'm Bosnian. We came to Eurovision at like the worst time, literally like our singer had to run to get to uh, like, to get to the airplane, uh, he barely like came there alive, and our uh, what is it called the person I can't remember now. He couldn't even make it. We had to take the Ireland Irish guy to do it for us. Uh, also, like he didn't even have his own suit. He had to borrow someone else's suit to be able to perform in it. And the song was about the what was ha about the war in Bosnia, and it was about people turning their backs on us, and by people I mean countries. Uh, we didn't do that well. And you'd think like people would have sympathy, Bosnia's going through such a hard time, let's vote for them. No, we didn't even get top 10. And it was a pretty good song. So in Eurovision, there have been situations like this. So I don't know if it's, I mean, obviously that was 1993, internet wasn't even like a thing back then. Now it is, but I still don't think realistically it's gonna happen. I don't think it guarantees the Ukraine win. Do I think it might happen? Yes, that's why it's on my list of potential winners, but I don't think it's like a guarantee situation. Oh, Ukraine's gonna win, no one else has had a chance. So yeah, I just wanted to say that. <laughs> Next up on my list of potential winners is Spain. Wow, y'all y'all know, know how much I love my girl Chanel. She's just bringing it all. She's the best dancer Eurovision has ever seen. As I've said before, she's better than any of the backup dancers we've had in Eurovision. She just brings, brings the show. Remember the reaction of the audience when she performed first on the Benidorm Fest. How much everyone was talking about, how much everyone was like praising it, and people were just shocked by how good she is. That is gonna be reaction of the Eurovision audience when they see her at the grand final for the first time. Obviously for us Eurovision fans, we have seen it like 
If you're like me, you have seen it 2,000 times <laughs> because I'm just in love with it and I'm in love with her. Uh, but for most people, it's going to be the first time watching that and they're going to be in complete shock and they're just going to be like, wow, what just happened? And obviously Spain, in this case, has the advantage of being an automatic qualifier. So it will be the first time for people to see this in the grand final. Y'all, people are going to pick up their phones and vote for this. Juries are going to love this because of the professionalism behind the team behind it. It's a good song. It's a song that can chart really easily and become famous worldwide. Chanel, she's like a rising star. I think she has a great career uh, after her in after uh, Eurovision. So I think realistically this could win Eurovision and I see juries voting for this because of her potential to be successful afterwards. Uh, obviously, uh, I feel like the juries are going to be looking for something this year that can explode as much as Menace can explode it after their win. And I think out of all the songs, Spain might be might have like the most potential to explode afterwards. Obviously, Televote is gonna vote for it because have you all seen her? <laughs> like <laughs> she's just everything. <laughs> so yeah, Spain is definitely one of the potential winners. Next up, and the song that I think is second most likely to win Eurovision this year, it is Italy. Y'all, this song is absolutely incredible. When I heard that uh, Mahmoud and Blanco are going to be performing in San, performing in San Remo, on, I will be honest, fully honest with you guys, when I saw Mahmoud was returning, I was hoping the song was bad and he wouldn't win. I, and I feel like the reason behind that was I didn't like Soldi. <laughs> I know everyone was freaking about it. I thought it was okay. And when it got second place and people were complaining it didn't win, I just never got the appeal of Soldi, and I never really got the appeal of Mahmoud's songs. But when then when I heard Bidibidi, and when I heard all of the other Sanremo songs, it was my winner. <laughs> so if it was for someone who really didn't want Mahmoud in Eurovision again, for me to say, yes, this is the best song in Disney Store in Eurovision, imagine how it's gonna be for people who actually love him and who have loved his music so far. Oh, I'm not saying I didn't, I hated his music or something. I just didn't think it was for me. But now, Brividi, I'm just in love with it. I am in love with it. It is in my personal top 10 and people are loving it. He's a big international superstar, which is gonna help with Televote so much. Obviously, juries don't care about who the host country is. Some people think it might not have a chance to win because they're a host country. Juries are not gonna care about that. Televoters who love Mahmoud and who already know him are gonna love that as well. So realistically, I think Italy is probably going to take it away this year. I mean, they have such a big chance to win and it's such a good song. I would be mad for like this winning if it was a bad song, but it is not at all. I'm, I'm in love with it and I would not be mad at all because Brividi is, would be a deserving winner in every single way. The only thing that I am personally hoping for is I hope they deliver a staging that is worth the victory. I wouldn't like for them to be too confident and say, oh, we can do anything on the stage and we're still gonna win it because obviously all these other factors. I would love for us to bring something unique on the staging and just like, and that's something Italy hasn't been really good at, staging. <laughs> uh, so I do hope that they bring something special and just convince me even more why they're, they would be deserving winners. So yeah, that, that is it. I do think Italy has a really, really, really high chance of winning. And the last song on my list, and the song that I think, if I would be betting my money, I would, <laughs> I would probably put my money on this one, is Sweden. Why do I think that? Do I even have to say it? I mean, have you heard the song? Exactly. <laughs> the song is an absolute masterpiece. Out of all the songs this year in Eurovision, the song that I think has the highest chance of winning both the Televote and the Jury Vote is Sweden. This is such a jury serve because it's a ballad, it's emotional, the lyrics are good, she performs perfectly vocally, she does not miss a single note, and obviously you know jury appreciates the vocal, and she just delivers the message with so much emotion. So because of that, I'm like, jury, obviously. This can win jury easily. Televote. This is also a televote bait because it's a type of song that is like radio friendly. She has one of those voices that are just so special that like, as I've said this before, but I feel like she could sing any song and it would get top 10 just because of how good her voice is. 
She has that unique, powerful voice that just I've been wanting in Eurovision for the longest of times and now it's finally here. So tell about, this can win tell about easily because of her voice, because of how raw and emotional the song is, people are gonna relate to it. People are not gonna watch this and be like, oh, just one of Sweden's pop songs that they deliver every year. They're gonna hear this, they're gonna feel something in their heart and they're gonna say, wow, like Sweden really brought it this year and just completely surprised all of us and brought something that none of us are expecting from Sweden. So yeah, this has a chance to win. Sweden, I would put my money on it. This song is a jury bait, this song is a televote bait. It has everything. This is the most likely winner of Eurovision 2022. That is it for my video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, please let me know down in the comments what you think. Who do you think is the most likely winner? Who would you put your money on? If you already did put your money on someone, who did you put your money on? I would love to hear it all in the comments. Uh, obviously, I know that a lot of you are gonna disagree with me. I, as I said, I'm gonna repeat what I said in the beginning. This was my analysis from everything I've researched. Uh, I am not an expert. I'm not in the music industry in any way. I'm just a big, big Eurovision fan and a big Eurovision nerd who just loves this competition so, so much and wants to share my love with you guys. And I just wanted to tell you who I think is the most likely, are the most likely winners of Eurovision 2022. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to my channel, make sure to follow me on Instagram, because I always, always appreciate that. Also, make sure to like and comment. Again, I don't know if I already said it, I'm losing my mind this much, uh, this already because I'm talking too much. But yeah, that is it for this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.